Hi, everybody. All right, we're going to talk about past lives today, and I'm going to work with my spirit guides in order to relay the message. This is actually my fourth attempt at making a video to talk about past lives. It's kind of overwhelming for me because when you talk about past lives, there's so many different avenues that you can take. We can talk about infinite time. So what is infinite time? It's the, it's, it's the reality that there's always past, present, and future taking place simultaneously. So how do you explain that as a human being? How do you, how do you understand what that means exactly? And how, uh, how do you talk about how are past lives even real if you have no memory that they actually exist? So we could talk about that. We could talk about past life trauma. Then how do you, how do you know if you have past life trauma if you don't have a spiritual comprehension of, of what that means, how to, how to take notice of it. So that even too becomes part of the conversation. So it's sort of like, um, I'm overwhelmed by all these different topics and different avenues I could talk about. So I'm going to work with my spirit guides and then I'll just have them help me talk about this. Okay. So I'm just connecting with them right now and then we'll see what they say. Okay. So Okay, so they're showing me what is a little uh, child, like a two-year-old child, and they they can they can they're on their feet just fine. They're moving back and forth, jumping up and down, saying really really excited, you know, making noises and such. And so I'm watching them. This one has a little hat on. It looks like a, like a coonskin cap, but it's actually got the ears on it. And they're running, 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 really really fast. They've got something in their hands. They're laughing and giggling at me, and, and they're wanting me to chase after them, just like little kids do. It's like, they want to play that running game, you know? And then if you give in, you're in trouble, because <laughs> that'll just keep going forever. <laughs> so, so I'm chasing him. He has no shirt on. He's wearing sort of like a, I don't know, like some sort of loincloth or something. It's a reddish color. There's some sort of animal skin about that, too. It's so silly, so silly. It's a little boy. He's very silly. I feel so tired. I feel like I'm too tired to chase after you any longer. That's how I feel inside. He has something. He wants me to get it from him, but I have to catch him first. I'm saying, well, what if, what if um, we could turn these tables and um, I can inspire you to come to me and then I'll just take it from you. <laughs> you know, like candy from a baby. <laughs> it's kind of a funny game. Hmm. No, he's pretty sad. When I stop and then I create an inspiration to um, show him that I'm really busy and excited about something I'm doing over here, he should come over here and see what I'm up to. He's like, he's really sad. He doesn't want to come see what I'm doing. He wants me to come and chase him. So I turn into a child and now I'm chasing him. They say, where are you going? I say, well, we're kind of out here in a field. And we're running. And now we're slowing down and there's very tall grasses. He has some sort of energy in his hand. He's turning into an older man now. He has more than one, two arms. He has several arms on either side of his body. Well, he's simultaneously still just a little boy. I can see this about him. It's sort of like a scorpion version of some sort of humanoid scorpion or something. I find him to be beautiful. This boy is beautiful, but also this other version of who and what he is is also beautiful. I say, so you mean to tell me that you find this humanoid scorpion to be a beautiful creation? And I say, yes, I find this to be a very beautiful creation. In fact, I'm so mesmerized and dazzled by it, I stand up and then I take one of these hands. You see, there's a boy here sitting before me. And, and also there's a mirage of this other f reflective image and it has several arms on either side and I'm taking one. It does not have hands like we have hands. It's got like clips or something. It's showing me another version of um, an identity. This one is even stranger. It almost looks like the Michelin tire guy. It just looks like his body has a lot of rounded pieces that make it up. And an odd sort of, I mean, it's like there's no head. There's just, there are no neck. It's just sort of like a tire head. It just has this odd, goofy shape to it. I can see a mirage of that one, too. 
I see a mirage of what looks way more human, but this guy has, um, it's almost like he would work a guillotine, you know? He's got like a black mask over his head, and then you can just see his eyes behind it, and he's not wearing a shirt, he's just wearing pants, and he's got a pretty muscular upper body. They're saying, so you mean to tell me you see all of these different reflections as you are simply looking at a two-year-old boy in the grasses? And I'm saying, yes. They say, do you know what he's holding in his hand? I say, it's light. It's a ball of energy. But it has more meaning to it than that. They say it's his ball of energy. It is who and what he is. It's his dynamic reflection contained in this single light. You could call it a candle flame. And it's within, contained within a single flame is an infinite reflection. How big is an infinite reflection when it is contained within the size of a single candle flame? And I, I, that is all they're saying right now. It's for you to, to contemplate what that means to you. They ask you if you know how big a soul is. Do you know how big a soul is? What if you discovered that a soul is the side of, of a candle flame? But if you are an atom, how big is the size of a candle flame? It's much bigger now, isn't it? If you're a human being and you're in a universe, the universe feels mighty big to a human being. But to a single grain of sand, now the human being is extraordinarily large. So what is infinite? It is a matter of perception, right? What is an infinite soul journey? Can you see the soul journey when you look into each human being that you cross paths with each and every day? Can you see who and what they were throughout the course of their infinite flame of experience? Do you know who people truly are in their hearts? When you look at people, do you truly know who they are in their hearts? Or do you think you know because of the way they dress, the way they act? You say when we choose to know one another now we are starting to see an infinite reflection one that contains their past life memories do you know who you were in other lifetimes they say you can look into the mirror into your eyes and discover other faces looking back at you have you ever tried to do that that's what they're saying sometimes when you look into other people's eyes you can see their faces change as well but you have to choose to want to see. How much do you want to see? It's what they're asking. It's about awakening your senses. How awake do you truly want to be? Do you know some of the things that awakening can show you, can reveal the truth about souls and soul journeys? They're showing me a darker reflection of reality. Reflections of souls who have traveled down darker pathways and actually transformed into what we would define as demonic in order for them to comprehend love. What do you make of that? That's what they're saying. Now look into this two-year-old child. Do you see his soul journey? Has it too walked along a pathway of a demonic experience? Could we even fathom choosing to accept that as part of the truth of soul journeys that souls do choose that again they're asking about what is your comprehension of time what is your comprehension of eternity what is your comprehension of a universe where there where there is no past present or future or where you could say there is past present and future happening all simultaneously how is that even possible they really want to emphasize taking what you understand and doing this with it, growing it, and expanding it. Are you choosing to remain the size of a seed, or are you choosing to break out of your shell and grow into the light? Part of breaking out of your shell is going through some experiences of darkness, right? In order to find the light. Souls who travel down pathways that transform them through massive experiences of d d abuse and in different versions of very dark experiences, souls can be broken and broken to actually see that darkness is love and not light is love. It's different. It's a different version of ex experience. So they're saying evil. 
they don't want me to define they don't want me to say darkness they want me to say evil the soul starts to un, to relate to evil being a version of love and so it chooses to step and walk on a pathway where it is searching for more food on the pathway of what is evilness and in that that descent or ascension ascension into evil can you ascend into an evil experience yes you can or do you descend into evil experiences how is anything ever as as human beings you see how complicated these conversations can become so as human beings we see that bad choices are we 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 label things as bad choices how about we say that and people who hurt other people are bad people and they're actually souls, infinite souls, that are exploring different versions of love. And some souls actually explore what is quite evil and demonic as a new version of an exploration of what is love. And souls can actually transform into the light again. So they can choose to say, I'm tired of this experience and now I want to move away from that experience. How do they do that? It's the same way that you choose to, uh, to move out of experiences in an incarnate state. So some souls, for instance, let's say they want to challenge themselves. They want to explore, explore what is an addiction. So the soul in it chooses to venture into an experience where they are vulnerable to substance abuse or drug abuse or something of that kind. And now they are roped into it and now they are seeing how those actions, those bad, terrible actions are now ruining the, their life, their family's life and everybody around them. And the soul actually endures the suffering and the pain of those choices in order to learn more about love. You see how, how difficult, you see how impressive at the same time this is? Are they ascending? Yes, they are. They are ascending into something more extraordinary through choosing to have challenging experiences. They are ascending and awakening to a greater version of love. So the soul now endures lifetime after lifetime after lifetime in order to find a way to undo the action, okay? Then when they are able, when the soul is ready, it will find a way to overcome the abuse, the substance abuse or drug abuse or whatever you want to call it, alcohol abuse or whatever, and then eventually it can move out of that. And so... And so that, that too is part of a soul journey and what makes up um, the soul's reflection. So let me get back to my spirit guides here because this is just such a huge conversation and I don't want to, I don't know how to contain it into a short video. So, so we are exploring everything I've spoken about thus far. We are looking again into this boy. It was important that I followed him because I'm choosing to look, I'm choosing to acknowledge that he, there's something about his light that I'm choosing to follow. And then by catching up with him and, and choosing to sit down and be in his presence, I am now looking into his soul. There's something about choosing to look into each other's souls. It's important for us to start to learn about who and what we are as human beings, but as souls too. We're starting to see each other differently and we're starting to have respect for one another because it's more than just this lifetime. It's many, many lifetimes. And it's also important to, I'm all a big advocate for really helping to flip the card of understanding because a lot of people don't relate to or un know how to understand why people act the way they do, why people make choices that hurt other people, and we label them as bad, but they're actually having a soul experience, a soul journey and exploration. A lot of this, there's a lot more going on in this whole experience of life than we could possibly imagine. There's more to it than just past lives, than just one life experience, or just infinite time, or just a soul journey that, that may have ventured into an evil experience and then transformed back into the light. You see how many different ways we can talk about life itself? So, 
we want to I want to talk some about how to heal past life trauma and that was really the what prompted me to make this video in the first place this is the fourth video I've made <laughs> I've tried very hard um, to make a, to create a conversation that creates enlightenment on this subject and it's hard because there's a lot to talk about and it's not a superficial conversation this is a deep conversation we're diving into an abyss of wisdom here we're not just in the baby pond we're diving into an abyss of wisdom and so how deep is infinite wisdom <laughs> it's the size of a candle flame <laughs> that's how deep it is how deep can you go into your own soul and what does that mean exactly so what else so now they are showing me this boy has aged into a man but yet he still looks like a boy and i'm sitting on the other side of him looking at him but there's also what is the development of a massive bonfire that is growing bigger and bigger and the flame is getting just so it's it's a big bonfire it's a lot of flame <laughs> i can't even see him on the other side of the fire now I feel separation from him, from seeing who and what he truly is. All I can see now is this big flame. They're asking me to look into the fire. So, I'm doing it. They're saying you're looking into his soul now. You see how much it has grown? You see how much it has grown from these experiences? From being all these different creations, it has grown from a single candle flame into a massive bonfire. And I say, can I touch the bonfire? They say, yes. I discover that it will not burn me. It's a different kind of flame. It's spiritual flame. I hold the flame in the palm of my hand. I explore the way it feels against my face. They're saying I'm choosing to learn more about this boy's soul. I'm, I'm wanting to learn so much more about his soul that I'm actually choosing to hold his soul in the palm of my hand. There's nothing about owning or controlling. It's actually a gift that he's sharing with me and allowing me to develop a greater understanding of who and what he is. He's a two-year-old boy, or is he a scorpion humanoid, or this strange Michelin man, or whatever. Who is he? He's all of them. He's all of these faces. And he's also spiritual fire. He also is that, too. So who, so what are you? Are you just one face? Or are you many faces, and spiritual fire, and a Michelin tire man, and <laughs> a scorpion humanoid? <laughs> are you also those things? <laughs> That's the part of the fun of discovering your soul, your infinite soul, it's discovering all that you are. It goes far beyond even being human or being on planet Earth. How old is our universe? How old is your soul? And so, there's something important about time and it's not going to be discussed in this video. But it seems I'm going to have to make another video to talk about it. Right now they're just showing me it. They're showing me that time is not real. And I get to feel what timelessness feels like. And it feels like you're trying to, it's like a cardboard feeling. But it's not cardboard. There's joy to it. But it's something as plain or as simple as there's no time. So now there's no sensation of motion. There's no sensation of going forward or moving behind. You know, sometimes like, oh, I feel like I'm getting behind schedule. So in, a, in an odd way, you're going into the past without realizing you're actually doing it. Sometimes we feel like life is getting ahead of us. So now you're starting to feel like life is moving too far into the future, faster than you can keep up with it. So what does that mean exactly? Where are you in the experience of time now? They're showing me this experience that time has no validity at all period there's no such thing as time period i'm in an essence where there is no going forward or moving backward there's only this moment and it has even no flavor or sensation of 
of motion at all. Time feels like it's in motion. This is their zero motion at all. And yet they're showing me in this space where there's zero motion, there's what is a tornado and it's going super, 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 super fast. Everything, uni all the universes, every single creation, every plant, every tree, every butterfly, every human being, every uh, uh, scorpion, humanoid, and Michelin tire man is all contained in this tornado. Everything is contained in this tornado. All of the souls, all of the souls in this incarnation cycle, all the souls are contained in this tornado, in a space where there is no time. How big is the universe? It fits into this tornado, in a space where there is no time. But somehow, once things start spinning, it starts creating a reflection of motion, which is moving forward or backward or, you know, from past to present to future. Everything happening simultaneously, while simultaneously also happening in a space where there is no time. So now do you understand something more about past lives? <laughs> you understand why I'm on my fourth video? <laughs> okay, let's see what else can we talk about. They're wanting to hand this to me. They, as they're handing me this tornado, I'm also a reflection of the Tree of Wisdom. So they're handing this tornado to the Tree of Wisdom and allowing it to be a part of its branches. This Tree of Wisdom is also myself, so I can feel my branches moving like arms out into the universe in different ways, and I can stretch out my roots like I'm stretching my legs or my toes and I stretch them deep down, and I feel really good in my body, which is also this infinite tree. And so this is entering into my, my structure. They're showing contained in each one of my hands, which is many branches, is all of this timelessness, is all of this memory, is all of this memory in motion, memory of different points uh, in an infinite... Um, tornado of reality <laughs> how do you explain it in a language I possess it so they're showing me that all of my branches are also containing hands and each hand is also a part of one tree one tree that is growing in many different directions and each hand is a reflection of every lifetime ever lived so you, the tree keeps growing and more hands keep appearing but they're still simultaneously connected to the one tree sometimes their hands grow up and out and what we would consider as towards the heavens or versions of of heavenly love that makes us feel joy right but sometimes the roots grow deep into darker places and help us learn more about different versions of love, love that could even be defined as evil. What is evil love? It is a sort of a love of harming others in order to make yourself feel better. So there really are people on this planet that we can agree to that they um, definitely do feel better about themselves when they're putting other people down. But that's part of the illusion. Evil also is illusionary. It's illusionary love. But it, it does feel real. It also has the experience of feeling real, just like feeling human is also feels very real, but it's also part of an illusionary experience. How illusionary is it when it feels this real? You got to decide that for yourself. So they're showing me that these roots are going deep down and they're dispersing, they're sort of reaching further and they're like worms going deeper into the ground and stretching their worm sort of finger pieces deeper down. And so they can understand more and more depth about that type of wisdom and that type of knowledge. And it all comes from top to bottom into the centerpiece here. That is the trunk of the tree. And the tree grows in both directions in order to comprehend an infinite universe, an infinite experience. So every part of your soul that has grown into the light and grown into the dark, so to speak, is all contained in the oneness of your infinite tree of wisdom. Of who and what you truly are. So that's all they're going to share. I really wanted to talk about healing past life experiences, but it's clearly not for this video. So I'm just going to share this and let you decide what it means to you, okay? 
I'll let you decide how this wisdom touches your heart and inspires you to look at a spiritual universe differently. It's important that we grow beyond everything that we've ever been taught. Everything that comes in a size of a structured book or the size of a, a the sort of a version of discipline that is right or wrong, good or bad, hell or heaven, it's time to take the book and go like this. It doesn't mean that you have to white out the most beautiful parts of a story. It's only that it's time to expand your understanding of an infinite universe, that you can realize that you are your own light, you are your own flame, and you are full of wisdom. Wisdom that you can discover by connecting with your own heart. You can grow in your own ways and really experience profound understanding. And it's all contained within your soul. That's it. So the next time you're at Walmart and you're looking at everybody, don't just see them as just more people, more dingbats, more idiots. We have to start looking deeper into each other's souls. This world can change when we start to revere each other's souls. This world makes us morph and feel confused and feel like we have lost ourselves only because what we have truly lost is just the connection to one another's souls. That's all that we have let go of because in this world the focus is entirely on the mind. A human mind. A finite mind. It is not on expanding beyond it and experiencing something far more extraordinary, more spiritual. And through this connection of spirituality, we develop a greater understanding of what love is. And that's what a soul journey is to begin with. It is a, to experience a greater understanding of what love is. So, that's all I'm going to share in this video. <laughs> if you're interested in connecting with me one-on-one, -on -one, I share spiritual healing and psychic wisdom at my website at abbynormalswisdomquest.com. Thank you for watching.